So we um, start up this project, the alcohol screening and breathing intervention project in um, conjunction with WAPA, um, trying to uh, find a way to stop people coming into hospital, at least highlighting alcohol related harm and issues earlier on in the piece and to, before they got um, to a, to a uh, situation where they needed admission or, or long term care for chronic illness such as alcohol related liver disease. So we brought the um, we tried to highlight their, their problems earlier on in their patient pathway and introduce alcohol screening brief intervention to the emergency department um, at Fiona Stanley Hospital and the acute medical unit at uh, Rockingham Hospital. And we were very pleased to receive a WA Health Excellence Award for this project. So in order to do this, this obviously touches many areas of um, the healthcare workers both in and outside of hospital and our, our secondary aim was to try and increase communication between the community services and also the acute hospital services. So we did patient surveys, we did surveys with GPs but also um, worked closely with those uh, community alcohol, drug and alcohol services uh, to try and provide a model of care that enables increased communication between these services. We, we appreciated that we weren't trying to fix the alcohol related harm issue just in the emergency department or the acute medical units within the hospital. And this is a complex problem and it needs uh, multiple points along that patient pathway to be um, uh, all in line. And so part of our project was trying to increase the communication certainly between the GPs and uh, the acute medical services and uh, emergency department um, at, in South Metro Health Service. In order to do this, we sent out letters of those people that are either um, moderate or high risk uh, drinking uh, behaviours and encouraged them to go back to their GP to discuss this um, further and potentially uh, engage with community services um, later on down the track. Those people that were High risk drinkers got reviewed by the alcohol specialist nurses within the hospital setting. So I was brought in uh, to help uh, evaluate the project. Of course, there's been plenty of evidence that shows that uh, alcohol brief interventions are effective when delivered by general practitioners, but it's quite hard to deliver them in ED because, of course, people come in, they're distressed, uh, the situation is often, often very busy in ED. So we actually used the emergency short stay unit as well. Uh, the location where we delivered our intervention. Uh, we did a, a randomised controlled trial and the important thing was that people had to be able to name a GP and we sent uh, letters uh, to those GPs uh, giving them information about the uh, condition they came in with and their alcohol score and any intervention we've done around uh, uh, that alcohol use. So one group got that and the other group just got standard care which was a brief intervention in uh, ESCU. We were also interested in people who didn't have a GP. Obviously, they couldn't be randomised because they're a different cohort to those with a GP. And we recruited those and we followed those up uh, separately. So the outcomes we were interested in were particularly their change in alcohol use. So we asked them about uh, the amount of alcohol they use. And also we used a screening test called the Audit. Uh, that was developed by the World Health Organisation. We asked them about whether they would used uh, any hospital services, GP services, or other specialist services. We followed them up at one month and three months. And then at six months, we actually used the hospital uh, electronic records to see how many hospital presentations they'd had over that six month period. The main outcome and the really impressive thing uh, was, a, was a reduction in alcohol use, a very significant reduction. So at baseline, uh, people were consuming on average 40 standard drinks a week. And when we followed them up at one month and three months, the intervention groups that had declined to around 20 standard drinks a week. That's a very important clinical change there. For the people who didn't have a GP, there was a smaller change and that had increased, their alcohol use had increased again by three months. So that was some important things we found out. The other important thing we found out was how many people were using their GPs. Now we expected that from the people we um, sent letters out to uh, and asked them to go to their GPs. But what was a real surprise was among those people who said they didn't have a GP, within three months, 50% had been to see a GP. So that really shows that we've got to engage with the, uh, the community services, uh, particularly general practitioners, 
to get these people the treatment they need. At six months, we looked at the outcomes in terms of their hospital presentations. Now those are quite difficult to interpret because if people have come in for an alcohol-related presentation, they're quite likely to have follow-up uh, visits, for example, to have stitches removed, maybe have a cast removed, further treatment. So we actually found that there was a slight increase in the number of presentations in the six months post-intervention compared to the six months pre-intervention. But those people who were in the intervention groups had a smaller increase than those in the no GP group, who had quite a big increase in the number of presentations. And this was particularly noticeable for people who had a previous uh, alcohol-related presentation the six months before we saw them. So the takeaway message for those people in ED is if someone's been in before for an alcohol rate problem, they're very likely to come in again. So those are the people you've got to target to deliver health interventions to. So one of the main reasons why we thought the GP letter, uh, sending the GP letters for the outcome of uh, an alcohol screening with intervention um, would be to be able to give uh, the GPs a reason to start that conversation about alcohol related harm. Uh, and actually we found that um, from the feedback we received from GPs, of course there were some patients they knew about their alcohol use and had been uh, attempting to treat it for some time. But there were other GPs who did get back saying, yes, they found this a very useful way of uh, uh, introducing the topic with a, a person where they hadn't talked about their alcohol use in detail before to highlight the problems with that alcohol use. So after this project has now been completed, uh, we have learned some valuable lessons that uh, alcohol is a very complex issue within the health service. Uh, it, was, it was fantastic to raise the awareness of alcohol-related harm. And in fact, now the um, Odyssey screening tool, that uh, is a series of questions that only takes um, less than a minute to ask, has now been introduced as standard part of the admission um, paperwork. And also, there seems to be an increased uh, conversation going on about alcohol-related harm, and certainly in the South Metro Health Service, we've created an alcohol steering group to further develop communication between uh, GPs and the hospital settings and also those uh, community drug and alcohol services as well. We do aim to try and uh, continue with the alcohol screening brief intervention within these settings and there are other projects going along uh, in the South Metro Health Service that are um, implementing some of the work that we've done. So one of the, one of the main outcomes from, from this project was to try and increase the awareness of alcohol related harm and trying to create some social and cultural changes surrounding alcohol um, and its use and misuse. If you'd like to contact us uh, further about this project, contact us at info at